We are back in the ranking business, still making our way through looking at rare champions from each and every faction. If you guys caught part one, we were able to get through Banner Lords and High Elves. Honestly, did not think it was going to take that long, but obviously it did. And so today, today, guys, we're back to take a look at Sacred Order and Barbarians. I'm assuming we'll be able to get through two factions um, per video. And then, of course, when we get down to the very bottom, we will put all of our little union members all together. So Sacred Order and Barbarians, you are up. I am your girl, Wicked Raider 22. So happy to have you here with me. Always sharing, love comparing. And since we are early game players, we are free to play players. We're going to be talking about the level of champions that all of us are running into on a regular basis. I can only really speak on those champions that I've worked with, depending on which account I'm pulling from. But I will say in Sacred Order, there are a lot of rare champions to definitely give a nod to. Are all of these going to be six star? I love you so much. The answer is probably no. But there are a couple of these champions I've definitely had a great time working with. They've allowed me to progress different accounts. It's always nice to have more than one account. Guys, if you haven't thought about it, I really want you to put some thought into that one because how you run each account is actually uniquely different. And it's a great way for you to focus on your gameplay. First things first, my girl Atho is going to come to the table. If this is your starter champion, you already know this girl can smack. She can come with it, hands down. Um, I am loving, loving that second skill. 37,000 reviews cannot be wrong. And Atho is pretty high regarded, especially when you are looking to advance. I use her quite a bit in campaign. She's made a difference for me as I progress from Brutal, moving into Nightmare. I've definitely had um, a really great fun with her in Dungeons and Faction Wars is another place. So coming in, one thing with Aethel. Now, now, books. My girl reads. She does read. So you will notice that most definitely. But she does come with a weekend, attacks that one enemy three times, which is pretty common in this particular faction. Um, with the weekend is kind of nice, but it is divine blades that gets me most excited. This particular skill will attack all enemies. You can increase the damage on it by an additional 25%. It's on a three turn cooldown and the damage potential is certainly there. Higher blessings is another one. You get your increased attack, your increased defense placed on a four turn cooldown. And of course my girl has an aura HP boost by 15% in all battles. For a rare champion, not bad at all. Witness. Witness is one that I have pulled before. I love the colors. I will give them that. Not the best looking champion in the game, but the vividness of the overall outfit, I'm kind of loving. Only 210 reviews, and obviously she looks a little solid. This is a champion I have pulled. I managed to vault her on one of my accounts, but I have not worked with her. So let's look at this kit. Long shot attacks one enemy, mm, has a chance of having an extra hit. Not going to be too much. Oh, my girl is sliding. Second skill attacks one enemy, has that increased defense on the ally with the lowest HP for three turns. She does have prayer of comfort, places block debuffs on all allies for one turn, places a shield buff equal to 30% on this champion's of this champion's max HP. On all allies for two turns, placed on a four turn cooldown. And has increased resist in faction crypts by 30. Where my account personally sits right now, Witness would not make my six star list. Aethel, by the way, is a definitely six star champion, um, one that you will be using throughout your gameplay. But Witness for me would actually be a vault kind of moment. Hospitaler, Hospitaler kind of falls in the same category for me. I have pulled a champion. She comes with pretty solid reviews. And I think it was a part of her kit that I just did not benefit from. 
Quick Slash, always that attacks one enemy on their first skill. She does have Wave of Purification, attacks all enemies, has a 50% chance of removing one random buff from each target. That's on a four-turn cooldown. Has increased speed, increased crit rate. Nice little combination on a three-turn cooldown. And revives a random ally with 25%. Now, this I did not remember for her passive. Downfall is it's on a five turn and it's only available when Harrier is on the same team. I know it was something about Hospitaler that I did not love. When you have to give up a slot to another champion, it definitely makes a huge difference. Here's something else. Go back to her revive. Revives a random ally with 25% HP and places a block damage buff on them for one turn whenever Harrier kills an enemy. It's not that the skill is bad. The cooldown could be lower, but it is the requirement of having Harrier on your team. So you would definitely be giving up two of either four or five slots for these champions to actually get the most out of them. There are a couple of champions that work in tandem, but this one would not make my six-star list. Honestly, Hospitaler would not be vaulted either. Purgator. Purgator, I've only pulled once. Again, guys, 109 reviews. Not very many, but comes across as pretty solid. Attacks one enemy two times will ignore shield buffs. On that second skill, this is becoming pretty common in this faction. Attacks all enemies, inflicts a 10% extra critical damage for each debuff on this champion, stacks up to 50%. That damage can be increased by 20%. That cooldown can make it down to three turns. So not bad on that second skill. Humble the Heathen attacks one enemy and decreases the target's max HP by 20% of damage inflicted on a four-turn cooldown. Increase of damage by 25% when fully booked. And honestly, Purgator is not going to have a huge um, place on teams for me. So this guy would mm, not be buildable and not quite vaultable either. Castigator. I have pulled and used Castigator. I'm really shocked he doesn't have more reviews. Pretty solid champion outside of Fire Knight and probably our Twin Fortress. So I wasn't shocked there. Has a kit that's pretty basic, easy to book out, which is something I did appreciate with him, even though he is an HP-based champion. So attacks one enemy and has a 25% chance of placing a Provoke debuff for one turn. It's the second skill that I kind of like, especially when it's on a four-turn cooldown. Heals the ally with the lowest HP by 20%. So it has a small heal um, of this champion's max. So then equalizes the HP levels of all allies and grants this champion an extra turn. What Holy Equity will do. Not only am I healing the person with the lowest amount of HP remaining, I will even out the HP levels of all of my other allies. And if you guys think about it, you are normally running at least one to two champions that are either defense-based or they have been geared to the point that they hold quite a bit of HP. So this can be really, really nice, especially if you have not pulled a reviver so far. If you don't have like an apothecary, if you don't have um, any other champion that's able to do a weak heal, this will be a pretty good alternative. Castigator is one I would build based on need. I would definitely vault him for later, just in case. I've used him in Faction Wars, and he's certainly come in handy there. I've also used him in Doom Tower as well. So keep in mind, you're going to have those rare rooms where you're only allowed to use certain factions um, for a particular challenge. And those rooms in Doom Tower can be pretty difficult. So be very, very careful with who you choose to keep and not. Chaplain. The chaplain is another one. Kind of puts me in the mind sometimes of Mother Superior. Um, this is a champion I have pulled before. Her reviews are okay across the board. Your higher areas, she's not going to be your go-to kind of girl. I'll be honest, this is a champion that is not six-starable for me. Um, Holy Bolt, really simple to the point. It's going to attack one enemy. Benediction is going to remove all debuffs and then heals the target. 
That heal amount is going to be proportional to this champion's attack. And then last but not least, for Radiance, attacks all enemies. Heals all allies by 25% of the damage inflicted on a four-turn cooldown. Um, Chaplain, for me, does not have the hardest attack. It's not like she's a nuker and that 25% is going to be an immense amount. Even though you can increase the damage inflicted by 20%, okay, if you have a slot that you just haven't filled, you're trying to get a feel for. Um, I've seen a couple of people that have used her or, or geared her out specifically for faction crypts, which is always one. You have to be really careful, though, because faction crypts will push you to the point where you are starring up and booking out champions that you just may not use anywhere else. So it's something for you to kind of keep in mind. Where would the champion be most valuable to me? Would it be early game, mid game, or end? Chaplain for me is not on my six star list. Um, barely in my vaults, but I would probably vault her just not to use her as food. Oh, my boy, Lameller is how I'm going to pronounce that. And you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I do not disagree with the reviews on this guy. I've never used him in Hydra. Honestly, wouldn't really think about him in Hydra. Sacred Flame attacks one enemy, has decreased defense, attacks all enemies, places a 25% decreased attack debuff, which could be helpful on a three-turn cooldown. I think this is why a lot of people use him in um, particular areas for the second skill. Passive decreases damage taken by this champion by 30% when their HP drops below 30%. And then, of course, has an aura and faction crypts by 22%. Um, you'll find a few people that will build this champion out. I think he's very, very niche. Um, for my particular account, not six-star worthy, not really vaultable either. I have used him for food, honestly, a couple of times, but eh, it's not doing it for me. Solaris is another one. I have pulled this champion a couple of times. He comes with decent-ish reviews. When we start getting to the low fours, high threes, it kind of makes you pause a little bit. Um, definitely not bookable on that list. So Cleansing Light, he's going to attack that one enemy, 30% chance of removing one random buff. This is a very common skill. Be careful if you're only building out a champion because of one skill in particular. I would definitely take a little time to go through the index and kind of see who else I may have the potential of pulling, just in case I have a better option out there. Solar Shield can be placed on a three-turn cooldown. It does attack one enemy, places a shield buff on this champion, equal to 20% of the damage inflicted for two turns. Solaris is coming across as a pretty selfish champion. He does quite a bit to protect himself um, and support himself as a champion, but the amount of damage that's being put out isn't necessarily enough to justify on this third attack, Blinding Bash still attacks one enemy. 75% chance of placing a stun. You can book that up to a 95% chance. Nope, I'm sorry. My math is horrible. You can get that up to a 100% chance of placing a stun. I'll be honest, though, there are a lot of champions that have that stun available. There's gear that can also give you that ability. So for me, he is not six-starable and... Not quite vaultable either. Renouncer, this guy I have not seen. I have not, wow, have not pulled. And for those of you who have, the love is not very strong, except for an Iron Twins. And let's see. If you ever notice that a champion has really bad reviews, except for in Hydra and Iron Twins, make sure you go through their skill set. I've noticed that. And I couldn't figure out why, but Either they have crowd control ability, there's usually something in there that they are specifically feeling a need based on the champions on your account. Guys, remember, no one knows your account better than you do. I like how you hit that chest. I'm feeling it. So redouble effort, attacks one enemy two times. That damage amount can be increased by 20%. Removes one random debuff from this champion and then attacks one enemy. Heals this champion by 25% of damage inflicted. That can be placed on a three-turn cooldown. This would actually be nice if it applied to the entire team. That would have been nice. 
attacks one enemy, places a 15% increased speed buff on all allies for two turns. And I'm pretty sure Battlefield Grace may be the number one reason that, that Iron Twins and Hydra are the highest rated. Yes, because you can take this down to a three-turn cooldown, increase the damage by an additional 20%. I wouldn't be shocked if Battlefield Grace is what kind of saves this champion overall. For me, where I'm sitting currently... Because of that skill, I may vault him, but he doesn't rush off the page as a six-star champion at the point of my account. Templar. Templar, you sometimes will get early game. I've actually pulled this guy a couple of times. I run him a little bit through campaign, but I've never kept him. He's usually sacrificed. Now, he does attack one enemy, um, has a decreased speed debuff, which that can be increased up to 50%, so not horrible. Attacks four times at random, something that you don't see too, too often. Each hit has a 25% chance of placing a provoke debuff. I told you guys about provoke. Places a block damage buff on this champion for one turn. I would love that block damage to be placed on all allies. Damage inflicted is proportional to defense. As a defense-based champion, he's much easier to keep alive. This skill is based on a three-turn cooldown, so he's going to be pulling quite a bit of attention. When he's on a team with Ultimate Death Knight, I will say this, even though he's throwing out those provokes so they're repeatedly coming back to Templar over and over again, you have Ultimate Death Knight that's going to absorb the majority of that, and you have Burgess on your um, team. He's another one that can definitely do a lot of absorbing for damage, and it allows Templar to have that ability to go back to skill one and skill two. And you're trying to cycle him as many times as you can to Righteous Challenge, only because you have the four times at random where he will be able to attack. So it's something to think of. The passive is, you know, pretty nice. Attacks with the champion's default skill whenever the enemy places a debuff on the champion. So he's going to come back and depending on how you have him built, you can be hitting that enemy a couple of times to try to get that decreased speed placed on them as well. Can be helpful if you're trying to kind of mitigate not only some of the damage, but allow your team a bit more time in those clan boss um, challenges is kind of what I'm thinking. In those um, later stages of dungeon is another area where he may be a bit helpful. For his aura, he does increase ally resist in arena battles by 50. I'm never too big on auras that are directly related to arena. It's not my, I love arena itself, but I don't necessarily pull champions just for that one skill. For me, Templar um, is usually used eventually as food. He could be vaultable depending on where you believe the game may go or depending on the champions that you could possibly pull later. But for where I am right now, not six starable and not quite vaultable for me either. So we have penitence. Penitence, I have not acquired yet. And those scores are kind of interesting. All right, all right. Got some interesting ratings there. Sword of Faith attacks one enemy two times. We have the decreased attack by 25%. We can increase the damage by 20% and the buff debuff chance by an additional 20% as well. Second attack on counter attacks one enemy, places a counter attack buff on this champion for one turn. We've seen counter attack within this faction before, so not too shocked. Damage can be increased by 15%, and you can place this on a two-turn cooldown. A lot of skills on a two-turn cooldown will sometimes make you pause. What I don't like is mm, she is a single attack champion. So Unshakable Faith removes all debuffs from this champion and places a block debuffs on this champion for three turns on a four-turn cooldown. So extremely protective of herself, uh, a bit too selfish for the teams I tend to run. So for me, Penitent would not be six starable at my current um, level where I am. And honestly, I'm not sure she's very vaultable either. I may think about it because she's a defense champion. 
um, unless you're looking to maybe run her in faction crib and get a little experience with her. But for me, I would pass on penitent at this point. War priest, we know this lady. We know this young lady pretty well. I have a champion review. One of my earliest, earliest reviews was actually on war priest. She can be a very solid champion around the board. All of us have had her, especially early game. Um, one of the first champions when you finish the first stage in campaign that you're going to acquire. I have kept this champion on one particular account. I did six star her. And then eventually, I think I either vaulted her. I think I vaulted her. I have also sacrificed this champion on other accounts just to keep myself from using the same champions over and over again. So guys, keep in mind, sometimes I will get rid of a champion, not because they're not good, but because I'm trying to force myself to actually use different team makeups, which is the purpose of me creating different accounts. It's nice to be able to see what other champions can do without bias. If not, we would all fall in love with the same champions over and over again. Now with War Priest, her first attack, throwing out the freeze debuff, still only attacking one enemy is not too impressive. Divine Light is why a lot of us like her. She does have that we heal based on her max HP placed on a three-turn cooldown. She will heal all allies except the target by 10% of the target's max HP as well. Blessed Weapons is another one that's really good. It can increase attack but for all allies for two turns, this can also be placed on a three turn cooldown. So it's not hard to book her out. Um, she does, you know, she, she likes a couple of books. I give her that. Not as many as we've seen other places, but pretty much with 11 books, you can book her out completely. If you don't have a healing champion, you may want to hold on to War Priest a little bit longer. All of my extremely early game, if you're still running normal through campaign, you may want to keep her. You're probably going to get a Templar along the way. You're going to pull someone else from Sacred Order as you're going through normal. And so I held on to War Priest until... I actually got my first reviver or someone with a strong heal. So one or the other. On one account, I ended up pulling Dur the Hungerer. You guys know I love Dur the Hungerer. On another one, she was replaced with Shaman. Um, and for that account, that's been a really, really good uh, replacement, which some people give my girl Shaman no love. But guys, I promise you, this depends on who she's surrounded with. And on one account, of course, I kept War Priest decided to um, six-star her and I'm working through booking her as well. Not a bad champion, not the biggest game changer, definitely won't go in game with you. Honestly, by probably level 25 or 30, you have likely pulled either an epic or a legendary champion that can give you a bit more. And that's when you kind of start looking at War Priest and starting to decide, do I six-star her or will I vault her? Um, this is one I would definitely say depends on your accounts. Not a horrible champion. She just won't be the strongest one in game wise. So eventually she will make it to the vault. Judicator. Judicator reminds me a lot of Templar. I promise you they have this, this layout for these outfits and they were just coming with it. Judicator, I've only kept for a short time on an account. Not the highest rank guy, not the most love. Still attacks one enemy, has a 20% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 15%. The turn meter impact on the initial skill can be a big one. There are going to be a lot of times where the 15% would be nice if it was higher. There are some champions that will give you double this. So even with the damage being increased by 25%, Bright Fury is one of those skills. The only reason that it really comes in handy is because it's the initial default skill. But there are quite a few champions that can certainly do it better. On a three-turn cooldown, you have Undermine. Attacks one enemy, has a 50% chance of placing a 30% decreased defense debuff. I can find champions and you're going to pull champions that do decrease defense, even though this debuff chance can be um, elevated to a 55% chance, you will definitely pull champions that will do a little bit more. 
So undermine is kind of undermining the skill kit overall. This attack deals 30% extra crit damage. Yeah, on a four turn cooldown. Judicator for me is not six starable. This little shield is so little. Plus it's hard. Not six starable, not really vaultable for me just because of other champions that can certainly do what he does. Now, Maiden, Maiden, let's see, where are we? How far have we made it? Oh, oh okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. So we've made it to Maiden. Um, I have, I've never, never kept a champion. I'll be honest. This girl is food, uh, wow, wow. <laughs> no love in Iron Twin Fortress at all. She would not cross my mind when it comes to Iron Twins, Hydra, not even Clan Boss, to be honest. Attacks one enemy. She's going to place a freeze debuff for one turn. Second skill, attacks one enemy, decreases the target's max HP by 25% on the three-turn cooldown with damage increase of 20%. And then so confusion, attacks one enemy with a decreased defense. Guys, I can't. With a single attack champion, you have definitely got to be coming with something a little bit more. Made it for me, not six starable, not vaultable. Mother Superior. I am torn. I, I, I am I am torn on this champion. Um, I'm really tempted to actually do a champion review because I don't believe I've done one on Mother Superior so far. I have seen Mother Superior talked about for so so many accounts i got so excited when i pulled this champion the reviews are pretty decent not the best in keeps not the best in certain dungeons but there are some some creators that really really love mother superior um she has the attack one enemy decrease attack on that first skill Second skill is probably my favorite, filled with blessing. Heals an ally by 30% of this champion's max HP. Places a shield buff equal to any surplus heal for two turns if the target is fully healed by this skill. And this is on a three-turn cooldown. Being able to increase this heal by 30% can be kind of nice. So it gets you up to 60. Um, it's probably one of the reasons I used her early game. Places a continuous heal of 7.5%. On all allies for two turns, places a shield buff equal to 10% of this target's HP on all allies for two turns. If an ally's HP is full on a four turn cooldown. And then she comes with an increased speed of 13%. For a lot of early accounts, Mother Superior can be a solid addition. I will tell you guys now what killed her for um, one of my accounts in particular. I pull Mother Superior after I pull Dur the Hunger. There's no comparison between the two. Um, on another account, I pull Mother Superior, and I want to say it's right after I pulled Shaman and one more champion. And I can't think of who that was. But their skill set together, mm, no. I have six star in Mother Superior. Um, I can appreciate the damage. To me, she's she's with a couple of notches below, maybe an apothecary. And I know, I know, guys, I should love apothecary, but he's not my favorite. <laughs> he is not my favorite rare. I just have not found the love. I think I'm going to run into a part of the game, whether it's in a rare um, part of Doom Tower, maybe, maybe in Faction Crit, where Mother Superior is going to be necessary. I'm going to vault her. Because I've already six starred this champion. I believe I've even I've fully ascended her. And I've, I've, I I want to say I've even placed a blessing on this champion. So she's one that I'm not impressed with, but she's already been six starred. So I would personally vault her unless you are in need of those skills. Hetzman, Hetzman for me has been. Uh, he's pretty average across the board. He's going to be your single attack kind of champion. I take that back. He does have on the second skill attacks all enemies with 30% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction debuff for two turns. I've seen people use him late game 
or late stage in different dungeons, especially when it comes to Dragon. Um, I even saw a team in Ice Golem run him, which is an area I would not, just base, looking at that base, little HP. Judge Guilty inflicts 15% more damage to targets under heal reduction. Heal reduction can be a big one if you are, for example, let's take a look and see how he was rated. Because the first thing that comes to mind, honestly, is Spirit Keep. And I don't think he's highly rated there. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we're, we're looking. Magic Keep is, is, is not the highest. Yeah. This this Champions for me is not six-starable, um, not vaultable. Sanctum Protector, another one that really, really reminds me of Templar. Um, he's going to be a solid champion across the board. Comes in with that attacks one enemy and has a 15% chance of placing a stun. A lot of champions in Sacred Order are really big on the stun. So not too impressed. Attacks all enemies, then places 30% increased defense on all allies for two turns. On a three-turn cooldown, if you have a team that's having a hard time staying alive, um, I, I think I've heard more people talk about him in usage for that reason than anything else. On the third skill for a four-turn cooldown, you're looking at False Bravado. Attacks one enemy and has a 70% 70, 70 chance of placing a Provoke debuff for one turn. He is a defense-based champion. A lot easier for you to keep alive. Um, because he's easy to book, I've seen people that hold on to him. But for me, Sanctum Protector is not six-starable and not quite vaultable. For where my account currently sits. Confessor. Confessor. 274 reviews. All right. All right. You know, she's got a little something going with her. I have not worked with Confessor. She is a Void champion. So there's always a little bit of expectation with these champions. She does for Stern Judgment. Attack one enemy. 15% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 15%. We've kind of seen this percentage a couple of times among our rares. And guys, as you start to pull more epic champions, especially, this percentage will increase. There are some campaign farmable champions I'm thinking about that are hitting at that 15%. Attacks all enemies on that second skill with a 70% chance of placing a 50% decrease accuracy debuff for two turns. You can put this on a three-turn cooldown, increase the buff debuff chance by 30%, also increase damage by 10%. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah. Still not impressed, not touching me. Unyielding Fervor attacks one enemy, has a 35% chance of granting an extra turn on a four-turn cooldown. My girl does not do enough damage for you to get overly excited about the extra turn. It's not a sniper moment. It's, it's definitely, definitely not a sniper moment. For her aura, increases ally crit rate in dungeons by 16%. Um, I've seen people work with her in Faction Crypt. It's kind of where a lot of them will talk about her. Um, not very popular in Arena. Not six starable for me and not quite vaultable either. Is this just a CR? Just a car? Oh, I'm just going to tear your whole name up, sir. The colors are nice. The outfit is, yeah. Okay, okay. Not not necessarily my favorite. Not necessarily my favorite. And not necessarily everyone else's favorite either. Looking at, yeah, increasing this champion's defense. He's going to have the provoke that we've seen when champion is hit. The critical hit counterattacks using their default skill decreases the buff's duration on the target by one turn with an aura and faction crypts for 19% of defense. Not six starable for me and not vaultable. Oh, I know that there are so many people that give Harriers so much hate, so much. I have actually not pulled a champion. Um, aesthetically, yes, bless his heart. This guy's as plain as it comes. Um, and I have to smile every time I see this champion pop up. He is the companion to our girl from earlier, since they have to be on the same team in order for you to get the best out of both of them. Um, Harrier, for me, 
Look, even looking at his skill set, has that 50% chance of placing an extra hit. His damage is okay. It's not horrible. I will say that. Um, puncture bolts attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 30% chance of placing a 30% decreased defense buff. We can get that 30 up to a 50% debuff for two turns. On a three turn, cooldown. Dead Eye Strike attacks one enemy and has an extra 30% chance of inflicting a critical hit on a four turn cooldown. And then, of course, passive skill for partner. Here we go with Hospitaler. There we go. We'll ignore 50% of the target's defense when the champion inflicts a critical hit. Only available when Hospitaler is on the same team. For me, I am not willing to give up two slots for any champion currently. Honestly, unless we're probably looking at Frozen Banshee and is it Graveyard Chiller? That's that's maybe. Depends on where I am in the game. But for me, Harrier is not six starable and not quite vaultable. Draconis. Draconis, I just recently watched a review on him. Pretty average champion, giving you what the others have given you before with Heals ally with the lowest HP by 7.5%. You can increase that heal by additional 10%. Places a shield buff on all allies equal to 15% of the champion's max HP. So you're definitely building him out for what he can do for others. Order of Mercy attacks one enemy, removes all debuffs from the ally with the lowest HP, then heals them by 25% of the damage inflicted on a four-turn cooldown. Currently for me, I'm going to say a no-go. Would not rush to six-star this champion, nor would I rush um, to vault him, only because by the point you pull Draconis for a lot of people, because I've been pulling for a while, guys, especially on my very first account, and I would love to go back and see how many shards I've gone through. I don't see this champion very often. Not popular in Arena, have not run into him so far. Um, and the skill set is not an uncommon skill set. All right. So that takes care of us as far as sacred order goes. And, oh, we've been working this one. Barbarians is not going to give us, I don't think, nearly as many champions to go through. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. A lot of these you guys have already kind of run into. We've talked about before. Marked as a champion, I would love, love to finally get. Reminds me a lot of War Maiden, except she has, of course, more clothing on. Who doesn't have more clothes on than War Maiden? She is highly regarded as a great champion, especially for earlier accounts. Coming in with Dance of Blades for the decreased defense. You also have attacks on all enemies for that second skill, which is nice. As a decreased accuracy debuff. You have block debuffs and increased defense on your totemic power for... Oh, which you can get down to a three-turn cooldown, so not bad. And then increases ally defense and faction crypts by 15%. So as a rare support champion, pretty solid. I would definitely six-star her. I know that there are some areas in the game, especially some rooms in Doom Tower. I would love to have her for, but I haven't pulled her yet. Elder, Elder. This guy I pulled before. I probably pulled him just not at the greatest time, but... The reviews, honestly, guys, kind of speak for it. He's not a horrible champion. I will put that out there. You can definitely get some decent damage from him if you are still running normal or even hard campaign. But the kit is not going to be the most impressive you've ever, um, you know, come into contact with. Mocking Blow is going to be a single attack that adds that provoke. Intercede is going to place a 50% ally protection on the most injured ally for two turns and then grants an extra turn on a three-turn cooldown. And then, of course, takes Vengeance, will place a counterattack buff on this champion for two turns and heals his champion by 15%. There are a lot of things this champion does for himself. He is not six-starable for me and not quite vaultable for me either. Hill Nomad is another one. 62 reviews. Oh, wow. Y'all are not loving my girl. Not loving my girl at all. 
So attacks one enemy comes in with a decreased attack. There are certainly some champions that have a percentage a little bit better than 25%. Places at 7.5% continuous heal buff on the ally for two turns on a two turn cooldown. And I'm going to be honest, probably a lot of people that gave her a little bit higher rating. It's going to be because of Nomad's Endurance. Places a Veil buff on an ally for one turn and a 25% increased attack buff for two turns. So you have the shield, you have the attack, you have quite a bit going on. And it just may be eh, kind of worth it, depending on where your account is. But hey, it can be placed on a three-turn cooldown. Shield percentage increased by 20%. Veil is also one of those skills I'm pretty interested in, but I prefer to see it on my legendary and epic champions. I'm not sure I've seen Veil on another rare champion. I have to definitely look for that as we're going through the sets. So she may be a little niche. Um, not the worst kit, but not something my, my account currently needs. So for where I am, not six starable, but I may vault her just because I'm kind of interested in that second and third skill. Oh my gosh, Doom Strider, guys, nobody ever told me, nobody ever told me about your girl. I had pulled Doom Strider on so many different occasions and instantly used her as food, just instantly. I knew I was pulling my good little mystery shards. Okay, boom. I would go in. I'm trying to upgrade, click, click, click. And this was one of those champions that always got used for food. I'm going through, kind of searching, just listening to videos in the background on champions that are underrated. Doom Strider comes across the screen. This guy starts running her through battles and my jaw absolutely dropped. And the funny thing is, all the times I pulled her before, it took me forever to be able to go back and to get another copy of this champion. Guys, if you have Doom Strider, do not use her as food. This girl smacks. She has that ability that kind of reminds you of an Aethel. Her kit is pretty solid across the board. She has been so helpful. Faction Crips comes to mind. I'm always thinking about um, even areas in campaign, a couple of dungeons I've used her in. Use Dune Strider. So Desert Wind, not the most impressive. It's still that single attack, decreased defense for two turns, takes a couple of books. My girl does read just a little bit, but Nomad Stride, it's always the Nomad skills, guys. So second and third skills, attacks three times at random. I have seen her even early game push out over 20,000 units of damage just with this attack. And when you are under level 30 and you're putting out that much damage, you can clear waves so quickly. Three turn cooldown. Each critical hit decreases the target's turn meter by 10%. Will only decrease the turn meter once per target. All right, we got Harsh Mercy attacks all enemies. When the, sorry, then attacks the enemy with the lowest HP. This skill is a saver. Harsh Mercy. Let's go back. Not only do you have a chance to attack all enemies, which is nice, and you know how you attack an enemy and they maybe have five to 10,000 HP left and it's like, oh, if I could have just smacked them out. Don't worry, my girl then comes back and if they are the enemy with the lowest HP, she will take them out. 75% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction debuff on the enemy with the lowest HP for two turns. This is placed on a four turn cooldown. The buff debuff chance can be increased by 20%. The amount of damage put out by 10%. Guys, if you master this champion out, she can give you damage like no return. Doom Strider for me is definitely six starable. Um, if you are not using her, if you pull her in advance, do not use her for food. Vault my girl and pull her out for later. All right, True Gore. True Gore, I, I have not. I have not worked with your boy and many of you guys have not either. 
but 30 reviews in. Wow. You are not loving him very much outside of faction wars. There are a couple of champions that fall into that category. So bloodshed rights, it's going to be a single attack that increases attack buff 25% on this champion for two turns. Always increasing himself. Attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 20% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. Oh, maniacal chopping. Yeah, give me something. Leave them gutted. Attacks all enemies has a 30% chance of increasing the cooldowns of all of each. Let's go back. Has a 30% chance of increasing the cooldowns of all of each target skills by two turns on a four turn cooldown. Probably the third skill is the best skill that he has. But it's not worth six starring. And honestly, not really possible. Not a bad looking champion at all. But I will pass on True Gore. True Gore, not Turger. True Gore. Sentinel. I have pulled Sentinel. Um, this champion actually gets solid reviews across the board. He is a HP champion. I was about to say support. But attacks one enemy and has a 60% chance of placing a provoke. Ugh, the provokes are exhausting. They are exhausting. And the one thing that I did remember about Sentinel, his damage is based on both his attack and his defense. And I hadn't saw that very many times. Second skill attacks all enemies, has a 50% chance of placing a 25% decrease attack debuff for two turns, 50% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction debuff for two turns. So that 100% is going to be big as well. His passive is not horrible. Heals his champion by 10% at the start of their turn. This heal can be critical. If you are depending on him to kind of get you through last minute, he's done that before. His passive is on a two turn. I think that's what I remember most about. I was impressed with this number. No need to book it. No need to do anything. Just as far as passives go, it was kind of nice because I almost thought it was a third skill until I realized, no, on a two-turn cooldown, that's kind of nice. You know, you can't beat it. So he does heal himself a little bit. I've seen people that have placed him in additional gear to increase, um, you know, this ability in particular. His aura is for resist and faction crypts by 30. Not a bad aura. But this champion did not quite make my six-star list. He is quite niche. I have vaulted him for later, but you guys let me know if you're currently using him anywhere in the game. War Maiden, there's not much for me to say about my girl as much as her clothing probably tells you. War Maiden is a campaign formable champion. Definitely worth it. You're going to find a lot, a lot of both free to play and whales in the game that still love War Maiden, especially early game to late early game. Um, Ferocious Attack, she can throw out a little bit of damage there. Does have that 2.5% poison debuff. That opportunity strikes will attack one enemy, places a 50% increased attack buff on this champion. And then we'll go for the extra hit if the attack is critical. This second skill on a three turn is, 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 is really, really nice. I will say her damage, you can book her out at an additional 20%. This girl can throw a little smack. She can throw a tap of a smack when needed. Because she is campaign farmable, it's not hard to fully book her out. She's definitely worth mastering as well. So if you have not thought about it, I would put her on the list of one champion to run through. Minotaur's Labyrinth, especially when you're not just hyper-focused on a particular champion. War Maiden can be worth it. Crumbling Blast is going to be the third skill for attacks all enemies. Has a 75% chance of placing a 60% decrease debuff for two turns. Placed on a three-turn cooldown. War Maiden is certainly six-starable, at least a five-star. Um, I probably will take my girl to six. And if not, vault her, vault her, vault her, and just continue to book her until you figure out a reason or a need for her. Slayer, I pulled this guy. He is a solid across the board champion. Kind of reminds me a little bit of 
trying to think of the other champion. He's almost like, he kind of reminds me of like an armor girl with not as strong. Like he's not tossing out the same amount of damage, but he gives you, I don't even know how to explain it. He's decent. I'll put it like that. If you haven't necessarily ran across a shield guard, if you haven't built out your armager, Slayer is probably sitting on your team. You get access to him pretty early on. Most people have pulled him a couple of times. Um, he does have the decreased attack. Also have the frost burst on the attack on enemies, which is kind of nice. On a three-turn cooldown, it does throw that 5% poison. So a little bit more than War Maiden. Also has a stun as well, so not bad. Not the most impressive of kits. Slayer, for me, doesn't hang around in my account for very long. I have usually used him as food. I would not six-star him. Um, I probably would vault at least one copy of him, but not a champion that my account cannot live without. We have Anointed. This guy gets pulled pretty often as well. I agree with the reviews. Not really vaultable for me. Coming in with that single attack three times on an enemy. 25% um, chance of throwing out a freeze. Also, it's going to come back through with that single attack. Each hit has a 75% chance of stealing one buff from the target. Placed on a three-turn cooldown, of course. 20% um, increase for buff debuff chance. Can also increase damage by 15%. And then you have your Chant of Violence on a four-turn cooldown that will fill the turn meter of all allies by 25%. And then places a 30% increased crit rate buff on all allies for two turns. His best skill is the third skill. It's kind of hard with champions. There are a lot of times that you're going to figure out their entire kit is not horrible, but it's hard to justify the resources needed to pour into a champion for just that one skill. And anointed falls into that category for me. Now, could you place them on a team and block out and kind of default that third skill? Yes, but that's going to leave him a lot of in-between rounds waiting on that skill to come back around. Um, I'm assuming if you are building out anointed, maybe you have a very, very, very specific reason. I wanted to see how he performed. Ugh. Faction Wars is kind of what I was thinking about. If you don't have enough barbarians, which I highly doubt, to run through Faction Wars, he may be a decent addition. I would not take this guy beyond five stars. Honestly, I have never... Um, upgraded him probably beyond four and then he became food so if you use anointed in particular I would definitely love to hear from you berserker this is the guy I was kind of thinking about I knew they all kind of looked alike just had a different color scheme to them berserker is a champion you're going to pull on a regular basis depending on where you use him in the game he can be um, a little game changer especially in faction wars a couple of the keeps as well I like him in Minotaur's Labyrinth. I have run him there before. A few people use him in Arena, or you can use him through Campaign. This kit is really simple and straightforward. He's doing a lot of champion turn meter filling, so he can fill this champion's turn meter by 30%. Would have been nice if he kind of shared it all, and it's all out attack. Havoc is going to be a single attack that grants an extra turn if the target is killed. Normally it does not happen. His... His smack is not that hard. It's not that hard, guys. Last but not least, he does sweep, attacks all enemies two times, will ignore 20% of each target's defense on a four-turn rotation. Not really impressed. For me, Berserker normally becomes food, not six-starable, not vaultable. Blood Braid is another one, not six-starable, not vaultable, not even close. And Raging Prowess has a 25% chance of placing a Provoke debuff. We've seen that one quite a bit. 25% chance of granting an extra turn. Uh, yeah, the amount of damage being done is not that great. And then for Life Curse, attacks one enemy. Places a 100% heal reduction debuff for two turns. Heals his champion by 30% on a three-turn cooldown. So this entire skill kit at this point... All of your rares, a couple of your rares within Barbarians have already exhibited 
So not impressed. Oh, my girl. If you pull Soul Bond Boyer, this is another one. This is another one, another one, another one. Guys, Soul Bond Boyer is most definitely six starable. Is certainly worth booking out. My girl has some strengths. I'm just going to be honest. I'm not big on her in Demon Lord or Fire Knight, so I agree there. I don't even think, I think the only reason I use her in Arena is probably for Tag Team. And Hydra and Iron Twins Fortress, I am barely, barely there. It's the kit for me. It's the kit for me with this champion. On the first skill, oh, I'm already in love. Ancestral Guidance attacks all enemies, has a 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. So an additional 25% chance. And my girl can throw out a nice amount of damage that can still be increased by an additional 25%. Infused Arrow will attack one enemy, has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit, and will ignore 75% of the target's defense. It's these skills. The numbers are good. The numbers are high. Some of these percentages you're really getting with your epics. So as a rare champion, she's a very nice one to have. Guys, Soul Bond Boyer in Doom Tower is key. Is absolutely key. As they start having events that require you to use certain factions, I'll say it again. As a rare champion, that's easy to book out. Does not require a large amount, of, you know, a large amount of books. Certainly worth keeping. Certainly worth working with. Now, whoo, third skill. Now y'all were with me. We were doing good. Four books in, still doing good at eight books. Now by this third skill, my girl is reading the encyclopedia. She is in it. So sixteen books total. But Soulbound Shot attacks one enemy and has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Also has a 75% chance of fully depleting the target's turn meter. Four turn cooldown. The last sentence says it all. If you are going through and you are thinking that I need some kind of crowd control, I need some type of turn meter manipulation this girl is it a lot a lot of creators it is because of the second and third skill that she comes to the top of the list especially as a rare and honestly she does it better than quite a few epics that i've had the opportunity to work with has an aura increases ally crit rate in battles by 12 percent my girl is certainly six, six starable if you are not ready to work and build with her definitely bought this champion and come back to her she will certainly be worth it tiger soul now they know y'all really really we put some face paint on it we we do do, do we see it do we see it tiger soul in your mind, you would think that, that my girl smacks just as hard. Aesthetically, really, really similar to our previous champion. Oh, oh, the reviews. I have found the reviews to be very true on this particular champion. I didn't want them to be true. I really wanted her to be like the, the twin of Soulbound Warrior, but oh, that did not happen. Not even close. The girl reads... Off top, with her 5% poison debuff for two turns, at a 40% chance of landing this skill, Scorpion Tips requires a lot, a lot. Damage can be increased by 20%. The debuff chance can also be increased by 20%, but this says no go for me. Wearing Tactics, oh my father, she is buying an additional volume. Look at the books. I mean, she's 16 in and we're only on the second skill that only attacks one enemy with a 75% chance of placing a 15% weakened debuff for two turns. There is no cooldown ability. This is a four turn cooldown. Kind of hurts your heart. You can't take that, that um, debuff up by an additional 25%. So you'll get it to 40. Damage can also be increased by 30%. But Tiger Strength places a block debuff um, and a 60% increased defense buff on this champion for two turns. 
for a three-turn cooldown. Not really worth it. We, at this point, you have champions that do increased defense. You have champions that will also do block debuffs. Tiger Soul, not six starable for me, not necessarily vaultable, um, unless you just absolutely have no poison debuff champions, maybe. But uh, no. For me, Soulbound, yeah, Tiger Soul can can definitely not hit the accounts and would not be missed. Skirmisher. I have actually purchased Skirmisher from the market. And I'll tell you why. The skill kit is kind of average. So twin shafts attacks one enemy two times, inflicts 15% more damage against targets who have no active buffs. Hex arrow will attack one enemy, decreases the turn meter by 20% if this attack is critical. So crit rate is going to be a huge one, a huge one. On a three turn cooldown makes it tempting. I will throw that out there. Attacks all enemies for dispelling shot and removes one random buff from each enemy on a three turn cooldown with an increase of 20% damage. As a rare champion, I have seen her work in tandem with, for example, Soban Boyer. I've, I put her on teams with Sniper. I've read her in a couple of areas. And I'll be honest, Skirmisher is not going to be a humongous, you know, account changer. But for a champion that I can easily acquire, I mean, easily, and they run her in market, so you can go through and book this champion out with little to no books or effort. She is worth at least taking her to a five-star. Four-star, five-star-ish, depending on your account. Once again, warning, warning. This is mostly if, you know, we're looking at rares, thinking really early game players, maybe, you know, in the mid-range, but I'm thinking like level 35 and below, maybe level 45 and below. I've used this champion I like her in Faction Crips. I like her in um, certain areas of campaign. I also like her depending on which dungeon I'm going through. I've ran her on a team with Eris and Spider before and gotten really good results. So because of the ease of booking this champion out and definitely the skills, I would say you could very well build her out to a four or five star. Um, if not... I would probably take her and at least vault her. You'll get enough copies that you can even book out this champion while she's in the vault and then pull her out when you have a little time and see what happens. Same body type, third time around. We have Ox in front of us. Ox is coming through with a pretty mid kit. This is one of those champions. He will fill the turn meter by 10%. Um, if an attack is critical on the default um skill shatter defenses attacks one enemy has a 60% chance of placing a 30% decreased defense on a three turn also a single attack with block active skills the block active skills can be nice on a three turn cooldown increases ally attack and faction crypts by 18% probably the last two parts of this kit are going to be most interesting but not really worth the six star not worth the vault Ragemonger is another one that falls into that category. Some areas he's pretty solid in um, across the board, honestly. Um, a couple of areas like Arena, I don't necessarily rate a lot of champions extremely high in Arena. He's not one that's going to come to my mind, honestly. Single attack with that 7.5% continuous heal, increase of damage by 30%. Attacks all enemies for that second skill two times, kind of nice. Gives you a sniper feel with that one. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing a 2.5% poison debuff for two turns. The debuff chance can be increased to 17.5. Come on, Plarium. We could give it a little bit more. I mean, go ahead and take it to 25%. You know, go ahead and let that rock itself out. Scorch Shot attacks one enemy and has a 40% chance of placing an HP burn debuff for two turns. On a four-turn cooldown, I've seen people that like him for the Scorch Shot. Not one of my favorites. Um, there are a couple of champions that can definitely do it a little bit better that are rare champions as well. Increases ally attack in campaign battles by 
1%. Not six starable for me, not quite vaultable, unless I just have no champions with HP burn. Um, so probably that would be the most tempting on this particular kit. Um, he's not extremely, he's not book heavy. I will give him that, but you guys will have to give him a go and let me know how you feel. Scrapper, bless his heart. Looks like he scrapped together his little outfit too. Look at you. Poor little Scrapper. When it comes to Scrapper, not too many reviews. My guy's going to be right in the midst. Not really the most, oh man, Scrapper. You don't go to the, to the outfitters too often, but you certainly go to the library. Text that one enemy places a shield buff on the champion for two turns, equal to 5%. The percents on this particular champion's kits kind of turn you off really quickly, right next to the number of books that are used as well. He does place an additional shield, eh, has a passive show off, increases the damage inflicted by this champion, equal to the percentage of max HP decreased on the target. That's a no-go. Ally attack in Doom Tower battles by 25%. Oh, that, that would be kind of tempting, honestly. <laughs> yeah, only because Doom Tower in some areas can, can really get you. But right now, Scrapper is a no-go for me. I don't feel a six-star vibe. I would maybe, and I mean, this is a thin, a thin maybe, think about. Just ball to him because of that aura mainly. But that's 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 about it for Scrapper. Not the most impressed. So we have managed you guys to make it through both our um, Sacred Order and Barbarians for part two. Just kind of looking at all rares currently in the game. Part one, we went through Banner Lords and High Elves. So we're done with the Telerians. If you have or you are currently working with any of these champions, I would love to hear where you're using them in the game. How do you feel about if you have six starred any of these champions? Do you regret it or are you glad that you actually did? We'd love to hear from you guys as always. We will continue with the series as we kind of push through. We're going into the fusion series. We're, 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 we're fast and furious and, and just waiting on what else is going to come between now and the end of the year. I'm pretty sure Playroom has a lot in store for us. But hey, if you stuck around this long, don't forget if you're in need of a clan, think about joining us at 22WK. We will likely have a couple of spots available starting to really come down to a pretty solid team. So I'm excited about that one. As always, guys, happy gaming and don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you soon.